Okay, today I'm going to be walking you through the Bebop 2 and the Bebop 2 Power 4G Soft Mod installation brought to us by UAV Pal, developed by Mark Pure, who has been working on this for many years and come out with a great product that's uh, being proven on the disco and now available on the Bebop. So what I'd suggest is that you go to the instructions, uh, have a read through it, and it's fairly self-explanatory. Now, as I'm working on a PC, uh, one of the main features that we need to connect to uh, Bebop 2 is to make sure that we have a Telnet installed. So before we even get to the instruction page, we'll just check that we've got Telnet installed on our system. So we'll go to the start button. We will type in programs and features and we will click on turn on or off windows features now this can take a while to load so we'll let this load and come back to it so now windows features is loaded we need to find a Telnet folder. So let's scan down here and see if we can find it. Here we go. So anything with a tick means that it's been installed when the operating system was installed. And as you can see, Telnet client has been installed and so has Telnet server. So you can put tick next to both. Telnet client is the most important. And then click OK. So we can now close out of that. And that will install Telnet, which will become obvious as we work through the install. So now if you just type Bebop soft mod install into Google, hit enter. The first thing that comes up will be our GitHub page with the Parrot Bebop 2 install soft mod, which is what we're looking for. So here's all the instructions here. Okay, I do suggest that you read through these. This will give you a general overview of what's happening, what's required, what it does, what it doesn't do, what hardware is needed, if you have the right equipment and so forth to see if it is worth you proceeding on. Once you've found that you want to go ahead, then head to the bottom of the page and click on the install. But don't forget that once you've installed, tried it and loved it like the rest of us, please make a donation to UAV Pal as it will help with further development and further mods. And they've been coming fast and furious since Mark's released the Disco mod. So he's hoping there's more to come. Let's head up to the install page and get started. Okay, before we get started, I just wanted to make a quick note that if you hear the word disco, it's because we've utilized some of the video from the disco install, which is exactly the same process. I've replaced the relevant Bebop 2, Bebop 2 Power, pictures and walkthroughs in the appropriate places but if you do hear the word disco 
and it's only mentioned a couple of times it's while setting up accounts which you have to have set up regardless of which machine you're flying so make sure you follow this step by step just replace disco with bebop in your head and you'll be right this walkthrough is very simplistic it's had a hundred percent success rate so i look forward to hearing your results in the comments and make sure you look at the description page for links to our uav pal slack chat group so that you've got all the support that you'll need and all the latest news on updates and up and coming mods so let's get started okay so now we're on the installation page and we're getting ready to get started uh, can i suggest that you read through this page a number of times before you continue with this video just so that you're aware of the steps that i'll be taking and exactly what's required obviously you can pause the video as required as you're working through it but it's a good idea to have a full understanding of exactly what you're doing it's not a difficult installation by any means uh, there's nothing particularly hard you just have to make sure that you read the instructions and follow them step by step so we'll get started and obviously we'll start with the required hardware which is an OTG USB cable to connect your modem to your Bebop now the Huawei E3372 modem is the modem that has been proven to work for everyone who's flying trouble free so this is the modem you want to head for there's two sh types one called stick mode one called high link uh, they're just two different firmwares basically simple way to tell is if you plug your modem into your pc or laptop and it is a high link it will come up with a start page if you have the stick mode it will come up with a mobile partner page if you have the stick mode modem you don't need to worry about this next process but if you have the high link modem when it opens with the name of the provider that you are using this page then you'll have to follow this next step so what we'll do is I know that I have the high link modem and I need to check that the APN that is on my modem is going to be the same as on the mobile phone that I will be using for my hotspot so I have a greater likelihood of getting a direct link so I will now plug in my modem into my laptop and we'll take it from there. We need to go into dial up and we need to go into the profile management. Okay, 
my APN is set to internet unfortunately as I'm using Wi-Fi it's not going to stay on but um, you can see that in my profile management that my APN is clearly set to internet okay so now that we know that our APN is internet and I've jotted that down we will move on uh, side note it is best to have both the modem and the mobile that's going to be used for the hotspot on the same network meaning from the same provider so that they're running through the same network otherwise if they're bouncing around off different networks you may find that it doesn't work at all or that you are getting a huge amount of lag and as I've stated before we have hundreds of users and none of them having any issues so they've all taken their advice and used the same provider for both the modem and the phone so I suggest that you do the same so we have the APN now we're going to move down as you can see from this photo you need to use the OTG cable to connect out of the USB port that's just underneath the battery and above the start button and either double sided tape your modem to the battery if you only have one or use some velcro so that you can remove it and swap batteries out if you have multiple batteries uh, which is a great idea because we all know how we like to fly so what we'll do is we'll move down to our web accounts and I'll walk you through these so glimpse just a very quick overview is a GPS tracking platform allowing you to track your disco in real time from the hotspot phone that you are using so let's head over to glimpse okay now we're on the glimpse website you need to open an account so <clears throat> we need to fill this form out obviously I'm going to use the autofill I'm going to use the email that I have made just for it okay it's very important that when you're filling this out that you use a the correct phone number for the phone that you are going to be using as your hotspot because to get your API key you are going to it will use the account the phone number that is um, attached to your account now if that if that account if that phone number is not correct then you are going to have 
a large amount of problems because you're not going to be able to follow your plane on the glimpse network. And my account has now been verified. So that's great. Okay, once you've verified your account, we will go back to the instructions. We've signed up. We have verified our sign up and verified our account. Got the welcome aboard message. We need to go to my account, click on the my apps and add a new app. So the application name that you need to use is UAV PAL soft mod. The platform is A API, the OS is other, and then you click create. So let's give that a go. Click on my account, click on my apps, add new application. The application name I have just copied, so I am going to paste. The platform is Web API, the OS is Other, and that's all we need to do. And we hit Create. Okay, now the most important thing here is your API. This is what we need to keep, and we need to add to our config files in the soft mod so that we can track our disco via glimpse on our hosting phone. So I am going to copy that API. I'm going to make a new text document. I'm going to call it Disco APIs and Codes. I'm going to open that. Make sure that I put in my that it's glimpse and paste my API, API number there. Then I'll return to the web and we shall go down to the next. Now as I've already got this installed I know that push bullet isn't required as my modem allows me to send SMS's via it. If your modem doesn't allow you to send SMS's then you will need to follow these instructions. As you've seen, it's just as simple opening a push bullet account as it is opening a glimpse account, and as you'll see in a minute, as it is opening a zero tier account. So let's have a look here. We need to create a zero tier account. This will establish a bi-directional connection between Sky Controller 2 and the Disco. So let's open this in a new tab. Let's create an account. You can either create an account with your own email address and password or just use your Google login. I've created an email address that I never use purely for this instructional so I'm just going to create it simply by using my Google account
Okay. And you will end up <clears throat> on the zero T page. We need to go to networks. Now that we're all signed up, logged in, we need to go to networks. We need to go create new network. And we are given a network ID, which is this entire number here. Okay, so it's not going to let me copy and paste that down. So I'll open my text document, type in zero tier. And I will just quickly enter my network number. As it says in the instructional, very important to make sure that you have these right so that the controller through your hotspot can talk bebop so now what we'll do is we will move down to software now that we have set up zero tier and glimpse and we'll download load what's required so obviously you're going to need the zip archive so we shall click on that to start the download This is downloading all the files that you will need to transfer to your Bebop and your Sky Controller. You are also going to need FileZilla. This is an FTP program that allows you to transfer the software from your PC to your Bebop 2 or Bebop 2 Power. So we will select the free download and we will then have everything that we need. Now that we have downloaded our Bebop zip file, we can open it in our folder. is my Bebop soft mod folder. Now you do need a zip file extractor. Uh, Windows 7 onwards has 7-zip so if you right click on the directory that's been downloaded and go to extract here it will create its own Bebop 2 4G folder and this is what we'll be using to manipulate the config files using the information that we have collected during the walkthrough. I uh, suggest that you set up FileZilla whilst you're doing this um, and because we're on a PC we have set up Telnet was the very first thing we did I have FileZilla already set up. I take it that it, you know how to install software, so I'll leave that well alone. So we will return back to the walkthrough and we shall follow the instructions. So I have downloaded the zip archive, I have unzipped 
or extracted the content and it has created the Bebop 2 4G folder. I will now use Notepad to modify the following configuration files. For each of these files you need the particular information that's being requested so read the description inside the file and replace the first lines example with your own settings. So we didn't set up a push bullet account purely for the fact that I know that my modem sends text messages so therefore it's not needed. So I need to go into the Bebop into the soft mod directory, go to bebop uav pal config and add my glimpse key. So let's do that. We will go to the desktop. We will go to the bebop2 uav pal config and the glimpse API key and we will edit that file with notepad and as you can read in the instructions it says enter your glimpse API key on the first line so I have put my glimpse API and zero tier network key in a text document. So I'll open that. I'll find my glimpse. I shall do a direct control C to copy it. I shall highlight the first line and do a control V to paste it. Then I will do file save or control S and close that particular document. Then we'll return to our instructions. Okay, so here we need to enter the phone number that we're going to be using. So we will need to go to bebop2 uav pal config phone number so we will return to the config folder we will find the phone number file we will open it with our notepad enter your phone number on the first line Okay, now here's where you may need a little bit of experimentation. Uh, Australia is 61. We always leave the first number off our mobiles. So I will enter the mobile number I used for our setup. Now, if you do not receive a text from Glimpse. Sometimes you'll have to come back in here and remove the plus sign. Uh, that seems to correct the problem. Uh, if you have any ongoing issues then go to the description of the video and join our UAVPAL Slack chat and you'll find plenty of uh, people in the community there to help. So I'm do, going to do control S to save that file and close it knowing that it's saved. Return to the instructions. The next one is a push bullet instruction. I don't use that so I'm going to skip it Okay, now the UAV pal 
config APN. This is not required for my modem as I'm using the firmware 22. If you do require the APN because you have a stick modem then follow the instructions above. They're very straightforward and you'll be able to find your APN then. Okay, so we'll move on to zero tier. Okay, so this is in the config file under Bebop2 ZT network ID. So we will return to our config ZT network ID. We will again open with Notepad. Enter your zero T network ID on the first line. We will then go to our zero T, copy it, and we will paste it. And we will do Control S to save it. We will close it and we will return to the instructions. Now we need to move to the Sky Controller. The Sky Controller requires the WPA, which is the password that is on the phone that you will be using for your hotspot, and the SSID which is the name that you have given to your hotspot. Since the making of this video, we've learned that it's best to have a single word as your SSID. Uh, it seems to work a lot better and make it work 100% of the time. So I would suggest that if you have two names as I have in this video that you change it to a single ID. I've changed mine just to dad but following is how to find your WPA and your SSID on an Android phone. Okay, so let's get started. So we'll grab our WPA and our SSID from our mobile. This is obviously from Android. We have in the instructions page how to grab it from an Apple phone. So pull down from the top of your phone, go to your settings, into your connections, then into your hotspot tethering click on your mobile host hotspot the name is your SSID as you can see is dad's android it'll be obviously different for you and the WPA is my password, which is 1107 Bella. Obviously, again, different for you. I want to check that my APN is the same as is on my modem so that I get direct connection. So I need to go to mobile networks, access point names. And here we can see that under Optus Yes Internet, my APN is Internet. And when we checked it on the USB modem, which is an Optus modem, it was also Internet. So I know that they're both the same, giving us a better chance of getting a direct connection. 
so now we just need to go back and add the SSID and the WPA to the config files and once we're done we're ready to move on to the transfer to the soft mod onto the Bebop and Sky Controller. We will back out of our config folder back to our main directory change to our sky controller UAV PAL into the config files we will enter the SSID which we've just looked up on our phone and we will edit that with our notepad now our SSID is dad's Android Control S to save it. We'll close that. Uh, password is eleven oh seven B E L L A. Hit Control S and close that. We need a uh, zero tier network ID so we will open up the notepad where we've saved it open the 0 t config file we will copy the 0 p tier network ID and we will enter that on the first line control S to save it and close and that is our configuration done and finished for the soft mod so now the soft mod configuration is finished it's time to move on to the installation video number two to transfer the soft mod to the Bebop 2 and Sky Controller. If you've enjoyed this video and you found it helps, please give it a thumbs up so we can spread it around. Subscribe so that you get notified when there is a new video uploaded and the install video will be up very shortly so keep your eye open 